Hello, I've wanted to make this video for a very long time, but it takes a degree of confidence to do this. I don't even know if I'll release this, but I have received a number of comments, very kind comments, saying that they love how my shot looks here on YouTube and asking me, how do I light my YouTube videos? How, what lighting do I use to make my YouTube videos? I don't think it's the best, but I've been making lots and lots of little changes. That's another reason why I've not made this video because the change is happening all the time so I thought in this video I'd show you everything I'm gonna take you round. oh hello you're over there I'm gonna show you around the YouTube home studio and I'm gonna show you some of the choices that I've made maybe you'll make better choices but this is what I've got it's a pretty budget setup but I'm gonna walk you through some of the steps I've taken to make the picture warmer because my, my videos used to look like this and they're good I, I was happy with them but over time, I think I'm happier with how this shot looks right now. I, I very rarely cut to this view where you get to see everything. So I'm, I'm gonna stay with this view. So if you'll just excuse me on this camera, camera one, we'll come over to camera two, hello. Ah, come closer, cause we love you. There you go. So this is the happy heart. This is my YouTube studio. This is my YouTube studio setup. Let's give you a 360 degree tour. And I'm gonna pick out some of the well, I'm getting tangled up. I'm gonna pick out some of the choices that I've made to try and make the, the picture warmer. So the first thing right here is the first improvement was the Sony ZV-1 camera or ZV-1. I've made uh, a number of videos about that, but that has really improved the, the picture quality and everything is mostly in focus now, which is a, a huge help. I don't know if I should show this, but this little uh, thing on the side, when I was growing up, I, I grew up in, in London and Thames Television was my local TV station. I wanted one of these Thames Television cameras and look, I've managed to get one. I've also got an outside broadcast truck. Again, this isn't quite as good as the real thing. But anyway, we're here for the lighting. The, the first transformation was the rope lights. I have this rope light around the room. I think it gives it a really nice warm glow. I also have a couple of spotlights. So there are a couple on the wall and there's this battery operated one here just to give me a little kick up on the wall. I really shouldn't be showing this, but the one that really helps me is this one here. It's a waterproof hand light that I got for my GoPro. And the way that works is I, I just put it there out of shot and it just brings up the armchair. If I cut to this camera, this is what it looks like without the lights. The middle of the armchair looks a little dark, so I just give it a little, a little lift there. I don't know if you can tell the difference. I can tell the difference, so no one will ever notice that. And everyone who's missed this video won't know that little secret. Over here, let's pick up the camera again. This is a, a massive change for me. I can turn this light off. This is what the, the room looks like without the light on. So it does have quite a pronounced effect. What I used to have was an LED strip behind the camera. If I cut back to camera two, I can switch it on. I've got a little switch there. This, this kind of helped. It got torn. So it's supposed to be two strips there. I don't know if I can get it going there while the blue tack holds. This used to be my lighting for some of my videos, but I didn't like the lines. It puts sort of white lines in my pupils and I, there was something that looked a bit odd and a bit off with that. So I'll turn that off. And then I bought this panel light here from a supermarket. And it's just a domestic light. But to me, this feels great. This is like a light box. And I have it just off to one side, just to hit this side here. And I have another lamp on this side, which doesn't make that much difference. It probably helps during the daytime more, but you can see it's a bit, it's a bit too dark without it. So I find it better to just have just a little bit of, of light there. The hut is in a bit of a state at the moment. The happy hut is a, a bit of a messy hut. Let's pick out a couple of things on the bench behind that I usually cover. They're my scripts. So I've got into a habit now of writing out bullet points in Biro just to beat out some of the things that I want to cover on the videos. That's a shot of some of my reference books for my script writing. And over here, got more LED lights. I uh, might put a, another strip at the back, but I got this from Ikea. It's going to feature on my Ikea Dad channel very soon. It's a foam, sort of padded foam board that I want to use for soundproofing. And I want to put that up on the, on the roof around. 
just to deaden the sound in here a bit. I'm hoping Santa Claus is gonna bring me a new lapel mic. I love this mic, it's the Boyer BYM1. I have a whole video explaining why I love this microphone so much. But I'm gonna see if I can upgrade a lapel mic just to see if the sound can be a bit better, a bit warmer. So what do you think, is this helpful? I absolutely love watching YouTube home studio tours. I've seen my favorites are, you know, from Sarah Dietschy and DSLR Shooter. And my favorite one of all is any video showing behind the scenes at Casey Neistat, obviously, the master of the YouTube home studio tour. But if there's anything you want to see, or if you can see any improvements that you would make to this setup, please leave a comment below. It'd be lovely to hear from you. And leave a link to your home studio tours. I wanna to see your places as well. If this video is helping, why not give it a thumbs up to let me know. And obviously, if you haven't subscribed yet, as I experiment and tweak further, and right here, is what YouTube thinks you should be watching next.